Hello and welcome to my video on price discrimination. In your textbook it might go with the Monopoly section but I decided to do it as a different video because I think shorter videos are easier for me to record for my voice. <laughs> price discrimination is basically when identical goods or services are sold to different customers at different prices for reasons not associated with costs. So for example you might have a bar where they sell drinks differently at different times of the day and this could be price discrimination or it could be due to costs if for example it costs more to hire people at night, something like that. The first example I thought of for this was on buses, you know how children have to pay less children's tickets at half the price, I remember those days, good old days, so that's why there's a really badly drawn bus there. For price discrimination to be able to happen there needs to be a few conditions and one of them is control so the vendor needs to be able to control what they're offering and who they're selling to and no competing firm is able to sell at a lower price because obviously then you'd have to compete instead rather than try to maximise profit. Prevention of resale is definitely another one, we can't have any leakages so we can't have one buyer buying a good at a certain price and then selling it on at a higher price to somebody else who wouldn't have been able to buy it at that price, if that makes sense. So say I got on the bus and I bought a child's ticket, which would be against the rules, so that's no-no, but say I did go and buy a child's ticket and then I gave it to my mum, that wouldn't be too good because then they've got no prevention of just lots of people doing that over and over and essentially ruining the system. And that means basically traders can't buy in a cheaper market and sell in dearer. And the final one is varying elasticity of demand. So some buyers need to be prepared to pay more than others for the good or service in order for discrimination to be effective. There's lots of different methods of price discrimination. One of them is geographical, so different prices in different countries or different regions. For example, different McDonald's in different places are often charge different prices. And obviously that could be due to costs, due to rents and stuff. But some of the time it probably isn't. It's just because they know they can charge more. So geographical is definitely one to look at. Time is another one, so different prices at different times of the day, for example train tickets, they are much more expensive at rush hour because obviously demand is much greater there so they know they can get more money for it. So basically if we have different elasticities of uh, demand for a good or service at different times we can have price discrimination there. Also coffee I think is another one, coffee tends to be more expensive like at breakfast time when everyone wants to buy it and that sort of thing, but that probably won't come up because I think it came up a few years ago. And consumer age, so different prices for different customers, so like a child fare, child ticket, child anything really. There are three different types of price discrimination and the main one you need to know about is second degree. I'm going to go through all of them just in case you might want to know. So basically there's first degree, second degree and third degree. And this slide is really pointless, it basically just lists the types and I'm going to have a separate slide for each of the degrees. Okay, so first degree price discrimination is basically when the discriminating firm can charge separate prices to each individual customer. You often need a good understanding of the customer to understand how much they're going to be prepared to pay. So this happens much more in really small situations, so a small local shop sort of thing could happen. Although even then they do try to keep it all the same. So it'd have to be very small local sort of deals, individual bargaining, which obviously you can't have on a larger scale. It needs to have very much separation of the market for each individual customer. And this really does increase your ability to make the maximum profit because each unit is charged at the maximum price that consumer is willing to pay so their consumer surplus should be zero. So essentially here we'd sell you know Z at price A because Z customers we know be prepared to pay price A and then ZY at price B and that sort of thing. This is the important one you need to know which is basically when discriminating firms can charge separate prices to different customer groups so for example age so children and adults sort of thing so we might charge adults price A and children price B so different prices for different blocks of consumption it's not each individual consumer each consumer group so up to Z is sold at A and then beyond Z here ZY is sold at B so we've got um, if we didn't have price discrimination and we sold everything at B, we'd have much less profit. We'd be missing out on some of the profit there. The firm would basically be missing out on that little rectangle at the top there. So it's obviously really important that they do get this extra profit coming in. Third degree price discrimination is basically all about different countries. So the firm charges a different price in different countries. So they'll always sell at the point where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. But because demand might be elastic abroad, you might sell at a lower price abroad and if we look at the profit here the profit is the shaded area so if we had them all sold at the same price all sold at price p on the last one the combined one that would bring in less profit than price a plus b because that's sold at two different levels so we've got more elastic demand abroad so b is obviously a lower price than domestic profit tends to increase with price discrimination because that's why people do it 
firms don't tend to have much of an incentive to just sell at a lower price because they want to, because they want to be nice people, because firms are all about profit essentially. Selling at a lower price basically attracts customers that might have otherwise not been able to afford to buy the good or service. So what are the advantages for price discriminator? Income redistribution is definitely a big one because income is essentially redistributed from the consumers to the producers because each consumer's surplus is reduced, potentially. Uh, profits is the next one. Obviously increased profits because you're selling each unit at the maximum possible price. That's basically the main objective of a firm, really, profits, so a big one there. And larger output, basically... In a single price monopoly, an increase in output would lead to a lower price, but because we're discriminating, we don't have to lower the price, we can increase output and still have different levels of price for different customers. So what are the effects of price discrimination on consumers then? Well, the first one is a loss of welfare, because the consumer surplus is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, it actually totally disappears under first degree discrimination, so that's not so good. Also, you could argue that it is inequitable, because some consumers have to pay more than others, which is arguably unfair. For example, there was a period when... I had to pay £1 on the bus and my friends had to pay £2 on the bus because I'm a June baby and they're October borns. So that is arguably unfair because why should they have to pay twice as much just because they were born a few months older? Older? Earlier. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> uh, next one is reinvestment. Now that's a good thing because we're making more profit so we could reinvest it potentially as a firm leading to lower future costs, lower prices, more dynamic efficiency and that sort of thing. And the last one is supposedly fairer, because hopefully discrimination will lead to lower prices for poor citizens so they can buy more. I've put fairer in um, quotation marks there because some people would say, well, it's not fair, just because they've got less money doesn't mean they should be able to buy more with that amount of money. And I think that is a very fair point. I think it's just, it's definitely an interesting one, but you don't want to get too into it because this is more socio-economic arguments, which the examiner doesn't really want to hear about quite as much. A point you could definitely make here would be um, we've already redistributed the income with income tax and that sort of thing and working tax credits. Surely that's enough. We don't need to make it fairer with extra discrimination. If we believed our system to be fair and to do the right thing, this price discrimination to help poor citizens wouldn't be necessary. So that's an argument you could make. I'm quite pleased with that argument. Woo! hope this video has helped you understand more about price discrimination. It's quite a nice, easy topic, so a question on this is always appreciated, although it can be quite difficult to put enough down to have enough to say about anything because there isn't very much content to it. Next time we'll be back with the joys of oligopoly, so I guess I'll see you then. Bye!